As most of you know, especially those of you sitting in here, on Sundays we, in the auditorium, we've been studying Genesis. And um, as we've recently been studying about Abraham and Lot, there have been many valuable pieces of wisdom that our teachers have extracted. And I've been thinking about these stories and rereading them. And one thing that has come to my consciousness through these studies, through this study, this time around, is that God's plan is better than man's plan. And sometimes interwoven into this concept is the requirement that even when things appear to be ugly and bad, we should patiently trust in God and remember that he is in control. So we read about Abraham, and as most people know, Abraham, he's known for being a father of faith, of, of sorts, right? Uh, known for his faith. Um, but we also read about mistakes he makes. Um, and in particular, one that probably comes to mind is how he lied. Um, he lied to Pharaoh, and he lied to Abimelech. And he said specifically to Abimelech um, that he feared for his life. Like, that's why he lied. He, he was afraid. Um, and, but my question is, and this is my question of the, the night, was God in control? You know, was, 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 he, was God not able to save Abraham and Sarah? And then as we moved along in Genesis, um, of course, you know, Abimelech is later, but as we moved along in our studies, um, Abram is promised a child from his own body in Genesis uh, 15, verse 4. And as many of you know, Sarai gets the idea since she's so old and it looks like it just isn't going to happen. After 10, at least 10 years of trying to have a child, they haven't had one. And so she sees Hagar and she's like, she's young enough. Problem solved, right? Well, we'll, we'll, we'll get a child that way because this just isn't working. And yet, and we see so much trouble comes from that, sol that solution. Um, there was strife between Sarai and Hagar. There was tension in the family after Isaac is born. And Ishmael's descendants are in contention with Israel from there on out, like through the rest of history. Um, and so my question, again, is, was God in control? Was it too hard for God to enable Sarah and Abraham to have a child? And we know that answer, because he does. <laughs> no, it wasn't too hard. I've been practicing. Oh, sorry, no, I don't want to get off topic. Okay, so I'll stay on, on my speech here. So, and then the, we get to Lot. And Lot accepted angels as guests in his home. And I think he was aware that you know, he bowed before them. He knew there was something special about them. Um, and when the men of Sodom came asking for them, he doesn't want to give them up. And he probably doesn't know what to do, but he offers his daughters, as we know, instead of these visitors. Um, and so my question is, was God in control? Was, was it too hard for God to save these men as well as, Ab as Lot's family? And it's so easy to say that, isn't it? But I, I'm going to keep going. And when, we, when saved by the angels, who literally pulled Lot out of the city and instructed him to go to the hills, Lot replied, I cannot escape to the hills, lest disaster overtake me and I die. So he goes to another city. But as Doug said, why not just trust God and his messengers who said, go to the hills? I imagine, but with that said, there, you could defend some of these people and their mistakes, right? Like, he may have been shaken up, because they did just tell him, escape for your life. Do not look behind you. Do not stay anywhere in the valley. Escape to the mountains, or you will be swept away. I mean, that's kind of like, something's going down. You know, I mean, it's nice that they told you, so they're, obviously they're trying to save you, so maybe that's comforting, but at the same time. Um, so maybe he was a bit shaken up, but was God in control? Was it too hard for God to enable Lot to travel to the mountains to be safe? And then later, Lot's daughters are with him up in the hills in a cave, and they're concerned about the longevity of the family. There's a problem. Their husbands are no longer alive, so they see it as a problem. Um, and, uh, you know, that is a sorrowful thing, that, that fact. And they're out in the cave, 
in the hills away from the rest of civilization, all by themselves with Lot. And they could, I could you know, you could understand how they, may, they would be struggling after losing their husbands and their home and their whole, like, life, their old life in Sodom. Um, and as we know, they get Lot, they get Lot drunk and they decide to have, to, they're going to make children with their father. Was God in control? Was it too hard for God to extend the line of Lot's family? And in each of these situations, there's a lack of faith that leads these men and women to solve problems using methods and means that are not in line with God's ways and his commands. And I often reflect on how easy, like I went through this list and most of you are very, I feel like you know this list of, of actions and what these people have done very well. Um, and it's so easy to reflect on these errors um, and to kind of feel like, how could you do that? You know, like, or why would you make that mistake? You know, you look at it, it's easy to separate yourself. I'm different. Um, but, you know, if Abraham had just told the truth, God would have kept him and Sarah safe. If Sarah had, would have waited longer in faith, God would have provided them with the promised child. If Lot had waited on God to save him and his family, he wouldn't have had to offer his daughters to the men of Salem. If Lot had just followed the angel's command, he wouldn't, it said he was afraid to stay in Zoar, where he ended up going first. He could have just gone to the mountains and not dealt with whatever happened there. Um, and then, you know, there's Lot's daughters. You know, if they had just waited on God, instead of trying to make a solution that was not a good one, the, the, an opportunity very likely would have been provided that would have been good and right. And as I was saying, it's easy to separate yourself from these mistakes, but the older I get, the more I see how I have issues and I make mistakes just as they made mistakes. And I guess what I'm trying to say it is, in perspective is we can't solve every problem. And when faced with problems that appear to be beyond our abilities, it can be tempting to step outside of God's ways for a solution to sin in order to fix the problem. But the ends don't justify the means. That, getting that right? Yes. All right. And so it's during these times that we must remain patient. Like you can look at, at Sarah, or you can look at, you know, and, and hold steadfast you can, to God's word and to hold steadfast to his ways, which you learn in his word, and to hold steadfast to his people. Because I can tell you, there are people sitting in this room who've prevented me from making some very bad choices. In 1 Corinthians 10, 13, we read, No temptation has overtaken you that is not common to man. God is faithful, and he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability. But with the temptation, he will also provide a way of escape that you may be able to endure it. And in Proverbs chapter 3, starting in verse 5, we read, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will make your paths straight. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. It will be healing to your flesh and refreshment to your bones. And we, with all this said, we must remember, additionally, the price that was paid by Jesus so that we could have forgiveness from our sins. And remember the value of our salvation. Because a lot of times that problem you're trying to solve, whatever it is you're trying to obtain, like if you could stop and weigh it, heaven, solution to this problem, you know, like it, it puts it into the right perspective. It overshadows the earthly problem, or at least hopefully it does. If it doesn't, it's an indication that our priorities and our treasures are not in the right place. Speaking of treasures, Jesus said, this is where I didn't print enough pages, so I apologize. Let me get my phone. The kingdom of heaven 
is like treasure in a field which a man found and hid. And for joy over it, he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. And again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant seeking beautiful pearls who, when he found one pearl of great price, went and sold all he had and bought it. There might be someone here tonight who has not seized this treasure, who has not obeyed the gospel, who has not been baptized for the remission of sins. There also might be someone who needs the prayers of the congregation. And so as we stand and sing this song, I invite you to come and we'll help you however we can.